Good morning. Making sure our mics are on. Good morning, everyone. It is so great <laughs> to see you. It's wonderful to see people in the pews and not be standing up here looking at an empty sanctuary. Yes, which we've been doing for six months. Yes. So, um, again, thank you. And we thank you all again for, as those who are joining us on our live stream this morning, these are our church officers who are here today and their families. Um, they've all had an integral part in helping make this possible uh, to get our campus ready for returning to in-person worship and then hopefully eventually in not too distant future other activities as well. So thank you, those of you who are here this morning. Thank you for those of you who are at home uh, worshiping with us this morning. We are live right now and there are people watching. There are. So it's exciting. We also want to just to make you aware that um, we will be continuing to update you on pastoral care concerns. Um, as we have noted along the way, we're hesitant to put names out there when this is a publicly accessible uh, live stream. But um, if you have any questions about any individuals that you see listed for prayers, uh, don't hesitate to contact Sarah or myself so that we can give you um, information that may help you in supporting those people and their families. Uh, those of you who are here have a bulletin in your hand, um, and those of you at home should have gotten a bulletin uh, through a link in the email. We encourage you to follow along with us. Um, because of the masks and all the things, we ask that you very softly recite any unison prayers uh, behind your mask um, just to keep everyone safe. Um, we want you to pray, but we also want to keep everyone safe. So uh, you can hum along with the hymns, but please do not sing. Um, at the end of the service, we are just like you were ushered here and we helped you know where to sit so we could maintain the physical distance. We're going to have our ushers escort out just to ensure that we, we all kind of abide by that as we leave. So just wait. And I know how excited you are when you hear that charge and benediction to leave <laughs> and get out there and do it. But we would ask that you would just remain until the usher indicates for you to to leave. And then as a reminder, too, we will not be passing offering plates this morning, um, but you hopefully saw them as you came in. Uh, you are free to either do that at any time of the service or uh, at this point, probably once you leave, if you have an offering you'd like to drop in the offering envelope, we encourage you to do so. Yes. Let us now prepare to worship God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has forgiven us and draws us close reconciling us through Jesus Christ, who has lavished upon us the fullness of the blessed Holy Spirit. With glad and grateful hearts, praise the Lord. Hmm. <laughs> Christ unites north and south, east and west. In him, there is newness of life available for the whole world. 
It is good news. But we also know that there is strain and strife between north and south, east and west. All of us fail to live into the complete peace that Christ offers us through what we do and what we fail to do. And yet Christ gives us a new beginning every moment of every day with hearts that trust in him and lives that vow to go where he leads us. Let us confess our sin using the words of our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Holy one, there is much we must confess. When we discount another's pain or overlook neighbors in need, forgive us. When we choose callous words over compassionate impulses, forgive us. When we think others less deserving of grace and ration kindness as if it could be exhausted, forgive us. Have mercy upon us, Lord, and heal our brokenness so that every word and deed that proceeds from our hearts might glorify you. Hear these words of assurance. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Alleluia. Amen. As we exchange the sign of peace this morning, I encourage you to stay where you are. And if you want to exchange peace with somebody across the way, give them a peace sign. You can even take out your phones and text peace messages to those who are on your list that you would like to extend the peace of Christ this morning. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Also with you. Please share that peace. Well, boys and girls at home and a couple that are here, I am back on the steps. I wish you could be back on the steps with me, but that day should come soon enough. Today in our scripture passage, we are going to hear from Jesus, and he's going to say these very words. Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart and this is what defiles. If your parents have ever told you to be careful what you say, that's what Jesus is telling us right now. Jesus is reminding us that our words matter, and our words are a reflection of what's in our heart. That we, we have to be careful with what we say to each other and kindness, use kindness with our words. Otherwise, we might be gossiping or talking about somebody behind their back or saying mean things to them. And I don't know about you, but I feel like I've heard a lot of nasty things come out of people's mouths in my life and particularly over the last six months. If you've ever listened to the news, um, people are not always very kind. Jesus is reminding us that it is what is in our hearts that matters. And so when we focus on Jesus and remember his words to us, we can speak kindly to each other. Or maybe, as your parents have probably told you, just don't say anything at all. <laughs> I know we've said that in our house. So I want you to talk with your families today about how your words reflect your heart and maybe theirs too. And different times that they've caught themselves maybe not being the truest person that God created them to be. Can you guys do that? Let's pray. 
Dear Jesus, may the words of our mouths be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Merciful Savior, suffering has saved our lives, secured our future, and restored our relationship with God. So remove the shame and fear that cause us to cower in your presence. By the power of your Spirit, open our eyes and hearts to your word of love, mercy, healing, and blessing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture passage today is from Matthew's Gospel in the 15th chapter, verses 10 through 28. Um, if you have a Bible app and you'd like to, or if you brought a Bible with you this morning, you follow along, I encourage you to do so. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached him and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and that is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, and slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the 12-step recovery program, you learn about triggers that cause people to momentarily regress to earlier steps. And they're captured in an acronym, HALTS. That stands for hunger, anger, loneliness, tiredness, and stress. I think you all in this room and joining us online would agree that we are our world is captivated by all these triggers right now. Hunger, maybe not so much, at least in our country, but others and certain pockets in our country for sure. Anger, oh my goodness. Loneliness, people who've been in their homes unable to have visitors. Tiredness, <laughs> oh yeah, and stress, of course. When I read today's gospel, this is one of those rare peaks we get of Jesus acting like, forgive me here, a jerk. Maybe he was hungry, angry. I don't know about lonely, but tired and stressed. Oh my goodness, I think he probably was. After all, Jesus is fully human. 
And does he have reason to be? Absolutely. We hear in other reports about the Pharisees and scribes being critical of Jesus and his disciples, and they're trying to find things to get him, and they've come down to the point of he doesn't wash his hands before he eats. At another time and place, we actually would probably totally laugh that off, but of course now maybe it's not as funny as it once was about sanitizing your hands before eating. But they're just trying to catch him. They're just trying to get him. He just can't seem to do anything right by them. So he tells his disciples that basically their criticisms are just petty. And before this passage, he tears into those religious leaders using fiery words from Isaiah, basically calling them hypocrites. He says, it doesn't matter how clean you appear on the outside if the inside doesn't match. Avoiding evil isn't about trying to do all the right things. No, instead it's about having one's heart be constantly exposed before God for that soul work. It's not about hands, it's about heart cleansing. It may not, though, have just been the criticisms of the religious leaders that made Jesus weary. As he crosses into a Phoenician territory in Tyre and Sidon, he is pursued by this Canaanite woman who's pleading for her daughter's demon to be exorcised. And back to what I said earlier, here we see a rare glimpse, Jesus being like a jerk, ignoring the call for help. It's very rare. And also, we can understand it went on so long that the disciples started getting pretty uncomfortable. And they said, Jesus, send her away. But he doesn't. Instead, I could see him maybe holding up a hand and informing her, I've got limits here. I've got boundaries. And then he gives her what would have been like an insult, calling her a dog, a derogatory term that Jews would use for Gentiles to be unclean. Notice the connection here. Wow, this is not our meek and mild, our our Savior, our patient one who lovingly holds people and encounters the leper. No, this this is Jesus getting kind of tough. And I would imagine that for that woman to hear those words in that day would have been another slap in the face. This woman who, no doubt, was hungry for God's mercy, angered by the injustice of what she had to endure with her daughter's affliction, lonely, oh my goodness, absolutely tired, tired of seeing her daughter suffer and stressed about when this daughter's life might succumb to the power that was in her and take her life. Oh, the courage she must have had to then in Jesus' words, to not be deterred, but to, instead of regressing, instead of stepping back, progressing toward him. She, the one who would have been easily dismissed, she, the one that perhaps the religious leaders would have said, better for you to ignore her. This Canaanite woman refuses to keep silent any longer. As Jill Duffield, the editor of the Presbyterian Outlook, writes, she refused to swallow the tyrannies that would kill her and her daughter if she did not speak, if she did not shout, if she did not persist. And so with all the courage that she could probably muster, she shouts at God, and he answers. Those triggers, instead of causing her to fall back, cause her to fall forward at Jesus' feet. American author Audre Lorde, in her speech, The Transformation of Silence into Language and Action, said these words, I have come to believe over and over again that is what is most important to me must be spoken, made verbal and shared, even at the risk of having it bruised or misunderstood. The author, after receiving a health diagnosis that she feared would end her life, reflected and came to understand after reviewing her life in hopes that, quote, what I regretted most were my silences. 
On that day in 1977, she asked her audience, what do you need to say? What are the tyrannies you swallow day by day and attempt to make your own until you will sicken and die of them still in silence? What do you need to say to God today? Where have you perhaps felt like the Savior has not heeded your cry? The sermon title today, WWTCWD, is What Would the Canaanite Woman Do? Jesus does not dismiss her boldness. He affirms it. He says, this is the kind of faith that is true. A faith that comes straight from the heart. It's not about being nice. It's not about being proper and having good etiquette. It's about shouting and saying, no more, God. Help me. You may be that person today. You may be a person hungry, angry, lonely, tired, stressed. You may have people in your life who your heart aches for. I think today's gospel lesson is an invitation to you to get real with God. I think today is an invitation to say about this pandemic, God, we've had enough. Help us. It's a day to trust more completely. Because it doesn't matter what we look like on the outside. If our inside yearns and aches for God, we have to let it out. And more than that, as a church, as the body of Christ, there may be people that shout at us. Look to us for healing and for justice. How are we turning a deaf ear, holding out a hand? Where do we need to stop and listen? Listen to people who are angered because of how they've been treated, whether it's the color of their skin or their sexuality or their countries of origin or any any array of issues. How do we need to listen? How do we need to hear the Canaanite woman's voice ringing in theirs? And how do we need to respond with mercy and love and healing words. Sarah said to the children, this time, these past several months, there's been too many hurting words, too many things said in anger, too many cries for help, met only by cries of dismissal. we as a church have an opportunity to do something different, to show God's love, to demonstrate God's mercy, to take our words, to give them as gifts to those who need to hear them and also to follow them with our actions, to become a people who embody the mercy of our Savior Jesus Christ. So today, think about where you're at. Think about what you are carrying, what burdens you need to lay down. And as you do, open your eyes to who God is calling you to see. Open your ears to listen for God's voice telling you who you need to hear this day. WWTCWD. Let that be our question this day. 
All thanks, praise, and glory be to God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit who has shown us immeasurable love and grace through our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our affirmation of faith this day is the Apostles' Creed. I invite you now to stand together. Let us confess what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Holy One, spark of life, creation was envisioned by you and is sustained by you. In gratitude, we pray for the world, that its riches and resources may be used responsibly and fairly, that its rulers and leaders may govern with justice compassion, humility, that humankind may live with understanding and respect, noticing what unites us. Holy One, prophet of love, you lived among us to teach us, to show us how to love. In humility, we pray for siblings around the globe, for those dehumanized by their struggle for existence, may we listen. For those overshadowed by the constancy of death, may we notice. For those besieged by fear, anger, and relentless peril, may we show up. For those ensnared by systems beyond their control, may we demand change. Holy One, breath of being, you are here in this very moment as constant presence and insistent voice. In gratitude, we pray, with boldness, we pray. Inundate the world with humanity. Overwhelm the world with truth. Flood the world with kindness. Upset our indifference, accelerate our action, fortify our resolve compel us to authentic discipleship that nurtures creation, embodies love, and breathes life. We lift all of these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Please stand for the charge and benediction. Go forth into this day in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint of heart. Support the weak. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may each one of you know that wherever you are and wherever you go, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with you. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.